Okay, people. So it's, um, I think it's like November 12th. It's 2017. I have this really, I'm really tight in here. I think it's really bad. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, I'm working on Uncle John's paperwork here. I'm looking at my notice of claim where I don't have a bunch of lines drawn out in through it so that we can pretend that it doesn't exist, right? I guess drawing out lines makes it null and void. I don't know. Anyway, I just want to say that I'm expected to remember as I'm going through these wordy um, acts rules and regulations and mandates and laws, Criminal Code of Canada. I'm, I'm expected to remember these things, right? In terms of how they're written, what section, what division, what part. The Bank Act, the Adult Guardian Act, the Trustee Act, the Family Relation Act, right? The Patient's Property Act, and then there's the Community Living Act, the Power of Attorney Act, and then there's all kinds of mandates connected to the Community Living Act in terms of how these care facilities are supposed to operate. And then there's the Hospital Act. And I mean, like, there's all these, all these words, <laughs> right, that all come together and intertwine with each other in terms of how legislation is put together so that it protects the public, people, the public. But I've already... Uh, you know, um, shown the two-tier healthcare system that exists in the province of British Columbia, Canada. I cannot speak on behalf of other provinces, but I'm pretty sure that it's similar because the thing about people that work for the government, um, whether they're intelligent or not, they're protected by the union. And this is something that Uncle John would tell you. You would have a group of union workers, right? Like, we'll just say 20. 20 union workers working on the job, working in the parliament building like Uncle John used to work. You know, he was a janitor, right? And out of those 20 people, you might only get like five that work really hard. And they take up the slack for the other 15 that don't fully do their job. But because the union protects them, they can't get fired, people. Uncle John said it was a big problem within, within the union right so whether you're intelligent or not it doesn't matter as long as you're employed with the government you're you're set for life basically whether you do a good job or not you're set for life like Joan for example when she was working for the government as a financial something supervisor or whatever the hell she was doing <coughs> employed by the BC Liberal government back in those days you know she suffered well, she 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 had <coughs> she had <coughs> mental health issues even before John married her. They started to materialize in the first several years of, of his marriage. That's why she couldn't have kids, because she was anorexic and bulimia back in those days, right? So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, as she worked within the union, and her her mental illness started to come more and more to the surface, and she couldn't cope with the job pressure, it didn't matter whether she was, like, not doing the job where she where they put her is they they just put her in a in a mental institution so basically she was going in and out of a mental institution for several years as she was being employed by the government they would release her then she'd go back to work for a while and then the pressure would get too much and you know she'd lose weight or do whatever or whatever 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 and then she'd end up back in a mental institution in the meantime government paid her for that they paid her they paid her wages they they you know when she'd go into mental institution they kept her on the payroll whatever okay this is what i this is what i'm trying to say it doesn't matter whether you're intelligent or not the union protects you if you're in with the union, you're in for life. And we know that the union goes after their superannuation life insurance policies, acting as if it belongs to them, just because a family member may... Because in those days, there was a lot of nepotism. 
that's where um, you know people get hired on to the government because so and so has a job and hey you know you're my you're my second cousin I'll get you a job with the government you know you're my uncle I'll get you a job with the government you're my friend I'll get you a job with the government this is kind of what happened with Uncle John with him kind of disappearing was oh well I'm a nurse I've been a nurse for 40 years I work with an immunization program for the province right I'm certified I make a hundred thousand dollars a year therefore I've got seniority you know I'm I, I I want I want I want favoritism I want you to do as I tell you to do just because of my seniority and because there was large amounts of money involved in there, whether it was his pension plan, quite possibly so they thought, a superannuation life insurance policy that they thought they, they could scoop up on him, and more than likely an inheritance from Joan that they failed to tell him about for 13 months until they drugged him up with a heroin opiate, as they would not give him proper health care in terms of physiotherapy and that type of thing. All to steal his money, and because you know this woman worked in the healthcare system for over 40 years and had seniority, there's your nepotism, people. You know the, 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 that's pulling strings for somebody else. Okay, and Fraser Health Authority and their lawyers want to cover this up because Uncle John is just the tip of the iceberg. Uncle John was just the bone. Normally they use the public guardian and trustee and families such as myself have to fight the public guardian and trustee. There's a long fucking list of court cases. Google it. You'll find it. Where the family is fighting the public guardian and trustee to gain back the enduring power of attorney or whatever it was. To gain back their loved one. To be able to see their loved ones. But in this case, because... John's sister was a reputable nurse who sat up on some freaking board of directors as a treasurer to uh, <coughs> bring in some code white system that's supposedly supposed to protect the worker when in fact they use it against the patients and their families, which I can prove in court, people. <coughs> but they don't want it to go to court, right? Because it breaks their their uh, their their um, their plan, their plan to accumulate wealth for themselves based on the taxpayers paying for that, as they abuse the public people. Okay, the video prior to this with those people out on the streets, that is public abuse because it's not only happening out in the streets; it's happening in the homes. It's happening through my videos as you see me being gang stalked, whether I'm being. Uh, harassed for toys and building material in my yard whether I'm being harassed because I homeschool my grandson because when he got back from foster care right he had behavioral problems right didn't talk for six months when they had him stop eating for six months when they had him right it's listed that he had issues with authority you know authority he still argues with me today not as much is getting better <coughs> two screws in a rail like, what kind of bullshit is that I've been in this house for seven years two screws in a rail why don't they go to every fucking house in British Columbia Canada based on two screws in a rail I mean it's pretty apparent people and, and in the meantime my grandson is witnessing this you know he gets home from foster care everybody settles in he's trying to bond with Uncle John and then what happens it starts all over again, right? Because of nepotism. Because his sister has got seniority and is protected by the union. Also, they could steal money, people, as they don't want to work. I'm not saying all of them don't want to work, but a lot of them don't like to do their jobs. They do the least amount possible just so they can come home and get paid with that taxpayer dollar and then go around fucking town bragging how they work for the government. Yeah, to abuse people. So now my grandson, like, Granada, I don't want you to die. I don't want you to die, Nana. And I'm like, Andre, people die. You know, if I die, don't worry. You got your Uncle Marcane, you've got your Auntie Tisha, you've got your Auntie Shimei, 
But I don't think man is going to die for a while now, so don't worry about it. But why should he have to worry about that, people? Because he sees me being harassed like this and stressed out. Because the court system and these lawyers and these so-called professionals that work for the fucking union don't want to um, do their jobs. Right? Because they're too busy being crooks. That's what it is. They're too busy being fucking crooks. And then when along comes somebody that with some intelligence, such as myself, they just try and defame you and make you look stupid. Like this is a deja vu with the nonprofit. I worked on paperwork for years and years and years and years and years and years and years on the nonprofit people. And they played it off like it was nothing. Right? Just go home and write more. Give us more information so we can pick through it and then apply it to our fucking political agendas and then make it sound like it was our idea. Does that not sound familiar to a lot of people that watch this stuff? How many times have you gone out there and done something, put it out in the public or gave it to somebody and then found out that whoever you gave it to or once it got out in the public, they left you in the fucking dust and are promoting it for themselves and never not once acknowledging that it came from you. Well, this is the same thing, people. This is the same thing. I'm not sitting here wasting my time reading all these acts, rules, regulations in the Criminal Code of Canada like a freaking Bible and not coming out with some kind of something in terms of knowledge. But they're the ones that want to twist it around. <coughs> right? Because they don't want to... They don't want to do their jobs, people. They want to get paid, but they don't want to do their jobs. And if they do a job, they want to do the least amount. Because that's the way the union operates, because it protects each other. So then along comes Uncle John, and guess what Uncle John used to have to do when he worked in the Parliament buildings? Do the job of five people instead of one. Just so that the job got done correctly. So anyway, I'm sitting here, not feeling well. My fridge is broken. No money. My fridge is broken. I'm hoping that if I clear it out, let it defrost, <coughs> it will start shooting cold air into the bottom part. The top part is over freezing and the bottom part is not getting enough cold air. So I'm thinking that maybe there's just something in there that needs to be defrosted and then it will release. If not, I don't know what to do, people. My landlady's not going to buy me a fridge. That's my fridge. And that fridge isn't even very old. My stove is half broken, my fridge is half broken, my car has been sitting out there for a year and a fucking half, going on two years, right? I got MCFD there, they come in here for two screws and a rail, right? And, you know, that interrupts the, the flow of the income in terms of, like, the money that I get for Andre, which is supposed to be a new and improved program, which put me behind on my rent that I had to borrow off my daughter to cover what I didn't get from them. And then I lost even more money at the end of the month to pay her back. And then they didn't give me money. And then they did give me money. And then they, and then they gave me too much money. And I took that money and I went off and I bought groceries for the wintertime, people. Because come wintertime, I'm going to be sitting here for four or five Five months with no fucking money to buy groceries I go five months at one time without buying any groceries people do you understand this is what Fraser Health Authority has done to my family like this is fucking bullshit total fucking bullshit and then I go out in the streets and I see those people the way they're being treated and I can relate to them because I'm being treated the same way. I'm just not out there yet, people. They're trying to force me out there, though. So I'm sitting here working on this shit. Because Fraser Health is trying to put in an application for the 7th of December. To throw it out. Because I refuse to, uh, what do you call it? Um renege on this so they're gonna charge me ten ten to twenty thousand dollars for their fucking funky lawyer fees that's what they're gonna do hold on that was my son came up to get the vacuum cleaner so anyway yeah I went off and I bought a whole bunch of groceries I bought cereals 
I bought stuff to make snack for him. I obviously you've seen I bought meat, whatnot. Right? Paid a played 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 a little catch up on a couple of little bills, nothing major. And then and then now I don't get money this month. So now I'm I'm begging begging and trying to borrow money off my kids to cover that money. Right? that they didn't give me because they overgave me and then I made the mistake of buying groceries so that I had a little extra meat and stuff like that and cereals in the house so that when the winter comes and the hydro bills are 400 and you know the gas bill is $400 a month and the hydro bills are coming in at $480 every two fucking months in the winter time for four or five months in a row I have food in the house people on top of what I canned and preserved right because I won't buy groceries for five months. I'll buy eggs and milk and a couple onions from the corner store. That's what I'll buy. I've already done that. Right? As Fraser Health Authority and CIBC Bank would sit there and say they didn't do fucking anything wrong because they don't want to read people. Because they don't want to read. Right? It's easy to send in the city and harass me. It's easy to send in MCFD to harass me. It's easy to give me too much money and then not give me no money to, to watch me fall on my face, right? To avoid all of this, people. So that when I get out there, they can harass me to the point where I definitely will die early if I don't do it before then. Because I'm not well, people, but like I said, it's not like I can go into the healthcare system with confidence. Right? There's something wrong. Whether it's my teeth or who knows. Could have a brain aneurysm going on in there. Right? There's some kind of pressure. Right? I wake up in the morning, I don't even feel like I slept. Everything's just ringing. And pressure, pressure is all it is. Right? Lots of pain. And right now, I can't even move my neck. I feel like I broke my neck. But I'm doing this anyway. Because it's raining. I can't go outside today. I was outside a couple days ago. So I'm going through my notice of claim, page by page, trying to determine how I'm supposed to list down these documents. So, I'm reading. See, here's, yeah. Community Care and Assisted Living Acts, Residential Care Regulations, Section 70. I already did that part. I got that. I just went through the Power of Attorney Act. And now I gotta add in the Bank Act, the Adult Guardian Act, the Trustee Act, the Family Relations Act, the Patient's Property Act. Are you listening to me? They expect me to do this, but they don't want to acknowledge that I've done it. Because Uncle John is safe. Right? While his family is being destroyed. His family, people. This is his family. It wasn't just Joan Duncan and Debbie Duncan. Okay? He lived here for 23 years. Joan moved over, lived with us for five years. And since Debbie was this adopted brat that hated everything and anything, she's the one that separ separated herself from the family because she was a spoiled brat that stopped talking to John when he, when her, uh, when he, when he and and Joan Duncan, his his you know whatever wife, uh, stopped giving her horseback riding. That's when she stops talking to John, when he stopped giving her horseback riding, and she didn't talk to him again until he showed up in Victoria on a gurney, all drugged out, crying for his family, as she saying, "Forget the past, I'll forget the past." If you forget the past. She wasn't even a part of his past to forget. But she expected him to forget. Well, the court system wants to enable that crap. Because they don't want to do their jobs. They just want to get paid. Kind of like Joan Duncan. And then when they go fucking Looney Tune, they'll commit themselves into the fucking hospital. Go get their asses wiped and primo 
health care and then when they're all better they'll go back to their jobs and they'll work for another six months to a year at the taxpayers expense until they go bonkers again and then go back for their fucking holiday into the mental institution as the union protects that behavior <sighs> I'm at number 81, and I'm not even anywhere near listing everything down. Because I'm probably not doing this correctly. But I want the judge or the masters or whoever to see that I've done my homework, people. I have sat here and read these things over and over again so that I can understand and comprehend and relate to the best of my ability what I'm reading and as I'm doing this all I can think about is these poor immigrant people that don't have assets like myself and my family that get caught up in this fucking drama through these unions and then are left to sink or swim on their own without assistance from lawyers because it's easy for these people to be ruthless and predatory without being held accountable and then have to sit there and figure this shit out on their own with poor language skills in terms of the English language whether it's reading, writing, or comprehension. That's a very high-risk population group because there's a lot of freaking immigrants in British Columbia, Canada. And I can only imagine what they're going through if they have to defend themselves and their loved ones. <coughs> and I, I'm almost wanting to ask the judge, I'm going to leave it on this note, so if I was an immigrant and I couldn't write ring English very well, and I couldn't read these rules and regulations and these acts and all this other crap very well, and I couldn't even speak very clearly or very well, how would I come to your courtroom and represent myself and my family? How would I even have a fair fighting fucking chance under those conditions with brown skin? Or black skin? Or yellow skin? As a minority? To a closed-minded court that wants to uh, cherry-pick what it uh, makes decisions on based on corrupt lawyers and their um, inability to be honorable because they're protecting the corporation. They're protecting the patient. Are they protecting John or are they protecting the corporation? They're protecting their paycheck. If they lose to me, Fraser Health will fire them. Did we ever think about that one? Because this is just a law firm that got hired on by Fraser Health. If they lose to me, Fraser Health will fire them. So they're working for themselves to not get fired. But yeah, how do, how do, how do, those immigrants under $70,000 a year manage to self-represent themselves with poor language skills in terms of the English language. If I can't do it and I've got a good handle on it, how the hell do they do it? That's a debate right there. Okay. So I, my eyes are going buggy here. Can you see it, people? I'm going blind. Now it's like all... <laughs> I'm like in a discotheque now. Everything's just... Let's see. <coughs> Uh, this is the way I'm doing it. Can't say I didn't fucking read it over and over 
and over and over again. Because I have. This is the beginning of my document list. Right? When the seventh comes, I'm going to show the judge what I've done. And if the judge wants to sit up there and mock it, then it's just going to stoke the fire. That's all that's going to happen. It's just going to stoke the fire. <laughs>